in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you are being immersed in the glory of God. Literally, His glory is resting upon you, resting upon your life, and you never live the same way, not with His glory. Hallelujah. Yes. For some of you, while you are listening, it will be unto you as it were in Acts chapter 10. The Bible says, While Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell upon all them that heard him. The Holy Ghost quickening men, allocating graces, relocating men accurately in alignment to their calls, their ministries, their mandates. Seeing to it that the mantle that is meant for your destiny and your life finally arrives. Your own assignment is to be wrapped in your attention to be determined in your heart let your heart be open and that includes those who are outside i saw quite a crowd of people scattered across this auditorium very humbled by the passion and the desperation that i see in the northeast for when there is hunger within your heart he will always come to you hallelujah he says you will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart my final session with us i'll be teaching on the victorious life is a miracle and impartation service in addition to all that we have discussed in previous sessions i started yesterday night by discussing john chapter 3 the discussion between nicodemus and jesus helping us to understand that in the kingdom and in scripture there are two kinds of birth just a one minute recap very quickly that there is the natural or biological birth that which has to do with a child being born from and through a man and a woman and then there is the spiritual birth and that Jesus um, credited the invincibility the supernatural manifestation that would be found in the life of the believer that the only possibility to be able to manifest this godlike display of power, grace, wisdom is when you subscribe for the second kind of birth, the spiritual birth. That which is flesh is flesh and that which is spiritual or spirit is spirit. And this morning, for those of you who were not here, let me beseech you by the message of God, especially if you are a minister of the gospel, please do go online or if, if the teachings are going to be made available, please make sure you access the teaching this morning. We dealt with John 17 and verse 3. This is eternal life that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. I told you that eternal life, the manifestation of the reality of this life of God that we have received, it has to go past the realm of just receiving to the realm of knowledge hallelujah you must know and understand god for the full import of the life you have received to be made visible and to be made manifest here and now hallelujah he says that i may know him and the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death peter said i mean paul said so it's very important for us to press to the knowledge of God. And I said there are three dimensions as far as knowing God is concerned. Number one is to know his character. Number two is to know his ways. Number three, to know his power. Hallelujah. 
that if your life does not capture these three dimensions of the knowledge of God, eternal life, the manifestation of it cannot be real in your life. The knowledge of his character, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger. I told you the key to eroding fear and eroding error from your life is the knowledge of the character of God. There are things that when you know about God, no prophecy, no revelation will dare or threaten you otherwise because you are secured in the knowledge of God's character. Hallelujah. And then the knowledge of his ways, the modus operandi of the kingdom. Then the knowledge of his power. Ephesians 1, 18 to 21. Paul said that your, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know is that true yes the what is the exceeding greatness verse 19 says of his power the exceeding greatness he wants you to know it the exceeding greatness of his power that same power that was exerted that brought jesus from hades back to the earth if it could take the son of the living god from hell back to the earth it can take you from where you are to any position and it says that you know that power and tonight we're exploring one more scripture and then with it we trust God to be able to help us in the name of Jesus Christ have you been blessed so far blessed be the name of the Lord the one who grants us all grace second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 we're doing 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14 tonight. Hmm. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. One more time I'll read. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. The life that the believer has been called into is a life of victory and a life of excellence. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that we have not been called into a defeated life. We have not been called into a mediocre life. Hallelujah. Apostle Peter, well mentoring those under his apostolic care here's what he had to say but ye are a chosen generation he said a royal priesthood is that in your bible a peculiar people he said that you are a people who have been called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light this is a description by peter now giving us a description of what is in the mind of the of God for the believer one more time but you are a chosen generation you are a royal priesthood he's telling you who and what you are you are a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, John in the Isle of Patmos began to document the things that were revealed unto him. And in his discourse, he had this to say, and has made us unto our God, he says, kings and priests, kings and priests. And he says the implication of that confinement, that office is that we shall reign upon the earth hallelujah when Jesus began to speak to the disciples helping them to understand their identity in Christ in what is captured as the Beatitudes when we get to Matthew chapter 5 beginning from verse 13 he begins this way ye are the salt of the earth he says and he says but if the salt has lost its savour or saltiness wherewith shall it be made salty again he said it is good for nothing except to be thrown down and to be trampled under foot of men 
the next verse 14 says ye are the light of taraba you are the light of nigeria he did not just say you are christians or will be christians he called us light then he says you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden visibility is your heritage in christ hallelujah he says neither do men light a lamp verse 15 and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick why so that it will be visible enough to give light and illumination to all who are in the house and then he leaves you with a final charge 16 let your light so shine not before spirits let it shine before men that they may see this is god wanting men to see not just to see him but to also see you that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven john chapter 15 and verse 8 says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 and verse 16 says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you are we bible students and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain longevity of impact that your fruit should remain ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 powerful scripture ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 here's what he says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works we are not just members of churches we are not just pastors you know what it means to be a workmanship the tools that an artist uses or a doctor uses or a carpenter uses the workmanship of a doctor is his stethoscope the injection whatever it is the workmanship of the carpenter is his hammer that means every time god wants to manifest he uses men not things we are his workmanship recreated in christ the bible says unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in them are we bible students we're discussing victory now ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 powerful scripture the bible says now to the intent he says that unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the manifold or multifaceted wisdom of god all of these scriptures attest to the fact that the believer is not just the, a weak individual hoping to get by in life and destiny that the life that you and i have been called into settle it once and for all and settle it for a fact that we have been called to a life of victory and a life of grace john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal jesus said to kill and to destroy he says but i am come not just to make you christians not just to make you followers of a faith practice that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly more abundantly more abundantly john chapter 3 30 and 31 the bible says give it to us please john 3 30 and 31 this was john the baptist speaking and he said he must increase but i must decrease 31 he now says he that cometh from above hmm. the issue is not he that cometh the issue is where he is coming from he that cometh a taraba man that comes from taraba is limited to taraba but if that man happens to relocate origin he comes from above he immediately is invested with the potential to be above all he that cometh from above you reflect your place of origin you reflect the limitations of your place of origin he says he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly he that and speaketh of earthly things he that cometh from heaven is above all are we still together so the bible is clear as to the fact that we have been called to a life of victory as simple as this point is many believers will live 
defeated lives quoting scriptures of victory yet living in defeat because the consciousness we are yet to receive for a fact never feel guilty for your pursuit for a life of victory it is within your spiritual dna programmed in you that you walk in and remain in victory are we together yes sir and very quickly before we begin to pray i just thought to pen down four factors that help the believer that puts the believer in the position of victory experientially what is the basis of this proposition of a life of invincibility and victory upon what is our confidence standing you cannot just stand in the presence of principalities and powers in the presence of men who are being manipulated by wicked spirits and then make such audacious statements not in our wicked world today knowing that the whole world lies in wickedness it sounds like arrogance for you to dare say you are victorious are you aware of the kind of wicked men who are on earth are you aware of the antichrist systems and structures that have been networked across the globe to see to it that the purposes of god is thwarted and yet in the midst of it you can dare say that you are victorious my question tonight and that is also my first assignment is what is your confidence standing upon because the bible says we know that we are of god and the whole world lie in wickedness when the bible says the whole world believe the bible there is no region that is immune to the possibility of wickedness you travel to us you find it there back to africa you find it there your village you find it there you relocate to your city it relocates with you wickedness is programmed everywhere the bible says but he said thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph hallelujah are we together but you see the reason why believers are not able to walk in the experience of the kingdom life i'm sure that you understand my thinking as far as dealing with the matters of the kingdom is concerned in the kingdom the awareness of the possibilities that have been made available for you is not where the power lies it is understanding the knowledge and the revelation are we together not just of the possibilities but how to make them manifest the bible defines light something science has not been able to define it says that which makes manifest its light so the assignment of light is to take away haziness confusion and darkness are we together now no matter what you know if it is still shrouded in darkness light has not yet come information may have arrived but light has not come hallelujah you know that light has come because it sustains an impeccable ability to erode darkness in an instant john 1 5 the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not and in this kingdom we rise upon the abundance of the revelation that we have sustained galatians 2 2 i went up by revelation took more than desire to go up i went up by revelation i access virgin dimensions in the spirit by revelation i access power by revelation i access the experience of victory by revelation are you ready now four keys for you to build your faith upon because from the theme of our conference it says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith your faith there is the summation of your belief the construct of your spiritual understanding are we together now when the bible says your faith he's talking from a generic standpoint the summation of everything upon which your confidence rests on that when i came to you paul was speaking i did not come in the excellency of speech are we together now yes he says i came in the power of god that your 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 faith will not rest upon the wisdom of men sophia 
but that it will rest upon the power it will rest in the power of God so that you are not resting upon shadows and when situations and circumstances come they sway you left and right most people think faith is merely just believing what God has said it is more than that are we together now the Bible says even demons agree on many things that have been written in the Bible Satan has scriptures in his memory too yet he never will become light so what really makes light is it the arrival of scripture because Satan has the abundance of it he quoted it verbatim before Jesus yet he is the prince of darkness number one what is the first key that guarantees the victory the experience of walking in victory for the believer number one the awareness that God is the all-powerful God please write it down as simple as this statement is ladies and gentlemen you will never be able to walk in victory until it is embedded within your spirit man that this God we have come to serve and to worship is the all-powerful God please write it down the first key that controls the experience of the believer's victory is the awareness the consciousness that God is the all-powerful God Psalm 62 and verse 11 Psalm 62 and verse 11 Psalm 62 and verse 11 I have spoken God has spoken once help me finish that scripture twice have I heard that power That power belongs to God. That power belongs to God. Nobody did an impartation for God to be powerful. Mm -mm. God does not increase in power. Where does it come from then? God does not submit to any other authority for empowerment. God does not increase in knowledge. He does not have the ability to learn. Who will be the teacher? Hallelujah. I have spoken. God has spoken once. Twice have you heard that power belongs to God. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Just two scriptures to establish the fact that the God that we have come to love, to serve, to live for is the all-powerful God. Our Lord God, he says, Behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth, not by your suggestion, by thy great power and stretched out arm. He says, and there is nothing too hard for you. Man of God, when this scripture becomes a revelation, you will stand and say that vision of a 5,000 capacity auditorium, even with 2,000 naira in my account, I know it will happen by a confidence that cannot be understood using the vista of science. Your, your confidence is derived from your knowledge of who he is, not some person somewhere who will help you. God uses men, but it comes from God. How do you stand before someone on a wheelchair you are watching the legs from your knowledge of biology you are seeing twisted legs that cannot stand or somebody who is working with an aid a qualified doctor who has been practicing for 30 years has told you that his bones probably he has bone cancer and you have the audacity to stand before the world and tell him to stand up you want to destroy your ministry you want to destroy your children How does someone look at you and say if I may have at least you will not wake up tomorrow and then you go to sleep early what gives men this kind of confidence how will Elijah watch the prophets of Baal ladies and gentlemen those guys were not calling fire for the first time no they would not come on stage for rehearsal these were masters of wizardry. They had mastered the art of manipulating the realm of the spirit. 
but not in the presence of Elijah. It, it can work outside of him, but not in the presence of Elijah. Elijah said, cry louder. Perhaps he's sleeping. If I were Elijah, I would be praying and say, Lord, when it gets to my turn, please. Even if I've offended you, let's talk about it later on. But for now. Hallelujah. God is all powerful. God is all powerful. Ordinary men encounter this revelation and it changed their lives. They dead life, they dead principalities and powers upon this understanding. Can I tell you, life by default will bully you out of your confidence. Situations in life as a preacher, as a businessman, as a parent, sickness will come to intimidate you. All kinds of things will come to intimidate you. That even when you cannot trust yourself, you will rest upon the fact that God is not scarce of power. He is the all powerful God do you believe what you just heard he that cometh from above is above all in our discussion yesterday Nicodemus came to Jesus and said no you are too powerful to be a normal human being he says we know that you are sent from God. This is the only reason why we'll agree. No man can do these miracles except God be with him. God be with him. God be with him. Hallelujah. The first basis of your confidence is that this God that you have come to love and serve, he's not just higher than idols. No. This God you have come to serve is not just the most powerful. He's the all-powerful. Most powerful means that he came and met several kinds of power. And it's just that his was higher than theirs. All-powerful means every power, even manipulated power, was derived from him. It was only corrupted. Any man who found power on earth, the central control room of power is God. The power that the herbalist and the native doctor uses is simply a manipulation of the power that was invested in spiritual laws. No, Satan cannot have outsourced power. From where? A man can receive nothing. Is it not in your Bible? Except it is given. Who has been the giver that gave God? Where will they get it from? Who does he worship? Who does he bow down to? He was willing to submit if he found someone greater than him and he searched and there was no one. Then he swore by himself. It's not, he, was, he was willing to be humble to search. If he found someone greater than him as God, he would have submitted. He just did not find it. Hallelujah. So when that God sends you you have to understand what is back in you. The centurion looks at Jesus and says, don't come to my house. I am a general or I am a captain in the army. I understand what it means to be defended by a government that is powerful. I am a man under authority and I know the power that is invested by reason of the authority I am under. I say unto one, go and he goeth. I say unto one, come and he cometh. Jesus, you are not coming on your own. There is an invincible government that backs you. Speak the word only. You don't have to come. Speak the word only. And Jesus said, I have not found such faith. No, not in Israel. Who mentored this man into understanding? That the government you are as powerful as the government that backs you can I tell you God is going to give many of us assignments that human strength cannot bring hear me assignments that will scare you if you are walking in the flesh you will have to walk in this consciousness oh he has spoken once twice have I heard all power all power all power when Jesus resurrected, he said, All hail, all authority in heaven 
and in the earth has been given unto me he said go ye therefore he never said go ye he said go ye therefore that therefore can mean the difference in your efficiency go ye with this consciousness if you just go ye as a preacher you are taking a risk what is before you pharaoh will not run away just because you are coming with a rod no it will take more than a rod for pharaoh to release israel he will ask you who sent you power there are instructions and there are things that god has given me and from a human standpoint your heart will fail you you will look stupid daring to take certain steps but when you know ah, that he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one you will be such an ordinary man but doing supernatural things things that will first surprise you the doer and then all and sundry as a testament that when god decides to back a man everybody you call supernatural is just an ordinary man who has found a supernatural god hallelujah supernatural god supernatural god when you know that god is all powerful obedience becomes easy because disobedience many times is a product of fear when fear dies obedience becomes easy for instance if god says empty your account it takes more than the ability to sign a withdrawal slip to obey that instruction it is a consciousness if a millionaire that you know comes to see you and all you have in your pocket is say a hundred dollars and he says please give me that money you will give it quickly because your awareness of that wealthy man you know that that hundred dollars you have given can translate into a house for you based on his benevolence so your ability to obey is predicated upon your knowing that that man is mighty hallelujah if you hear that the governor has called you and he says he wants to bless you even if you don't have money you can borrow without fear he said don't worry i'm returning back with joy you better give me this thing now if not you will regret later on what suddenly changed the awareness that a man of power and might and influence is sending for you how about the one who called you into ministry how about the one who mandated you to go to the nations? How about the one who told you he will be there with you? Only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings. There are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are thrones But only a Yeshua will reign forever To his kingdom there'll be no end There are names, there are titles There are legends and tales of strength but only a Yeshua will reign forever To his kingdom there'll be no end When you stand before the challenges and the vicissitudes of life The awareness that God is the all-powerful God Grants you such confidence to walk in victory can we continue number two Bible faith and the victory of the believer is predicated upon this too that we have been made partakers of his divine nature we have been made partakers please don't downplay these thoughts these is what must be constructed in your spirit man to walk in victory number one the awareness that god is the all-powerful god but it does not stop there number two the awareness that we have been made partakers 
of his divine life what does that mean we have been made to be partakers of his victory over sin his victory over death his victory over hell his victory over principalities and powers theologically speaking the implication there is a twofold implication to being a partaker of God's divine nature number one is the implication of your oneness that being a partaker of his divine nature means that you have come into union oneness with him the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is one spirit ladies and gentlemen these are my hands I've had these hands all my life from the point I was born another one did not come what suddenly changed that this same hand can be laid on a sick body an awareness that I'm not just a Christian but you have been you have made now to become a partaker that when you stretch your hand it's not just the human hand being stretched the hands of Jesus being stretched that when you speak it's not just the sound of the voice of a man that is being heard that in the realm of the spirit his majesty can echo through your voice and speak his purposes to the lives of men to be a partaker of his divine nature means that you have been made number one one with Christ and then number two is your positional advantage Ephesians chapter 2 please Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 6 I like Paul when I get to heaven I need to give that man a high five and a salutation I will say Paul so this is you I've seen you once in my vision but now I see you in your full expression the way that you are and give him a handshake and say thank you for helping us understand the other things Jesus said there are many other things I need to tell you that ye cannot bear them now it was Paul who began to reveal the many other things for instance you never understand through the gospel the implication of our being saved it was through the Pauline epistle that the full implication of receiving the life of God was explained So he says in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us verse 5 even when we were dead in sin had quickened us together say together one more time say together together with Christ by grace are ye saved then verse 6 your positional advantage and had raised us up together ah. we will rise in your name Adonai hey, you reign on high. we will rise in your name Adonai Let's finish that scripture and has been raised us up together and has made us sit together count how many times together was mentioned from verse 4 to verse 6 at least three times together 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 carry that consciousness together and the Lord walking with them together healing with them together preaching with them together rebuking those spirits together carry that together mindset ah yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil not because the valley is not there thou art with me the together implication hold on did the bible not say two are better than one when you carry the consciousness of walking alone preaching alone doing business alone living alone that that mindset has already defeated you someone say together let it enter your spirit mm, together as i stand before the sick body you are only seeing one person but we are together is the word koinonia the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship the sharing together the participation
participation drinking from the same cup he says let that consciousness remain with you don't just say I'm born again I'm a Christian please do not forget this revelation carry that word hashtag it in your mind not on social media together together pastor you traveled from your station to come and hear this one word together you can literally carry it as a revelation together ah together in the building plan together in the discipleship together in the crusade ground together whenever your heart fails you you remember together together alone i can fail but me and god cannot fail together There is no doubt that by myself I will fail. But me and God cannot fail together. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Before you call me a failure, verify if I am alone. Preacher, why have you allowed the devil call you a failure? Yet he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one. Let me tell you as simple as this revelation is carry this mindset and you watch mountains give way elijah knew he was not alone david knew he was not alone gideon knew he was not alone esther knew she was not alone deborah knew she was all the people who were valiant you are the only one who is still thinking you are alone <laughs> together 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 Kali ah, together David looked at Goliath and said do not think it's only one man that is standing here you come to me with your bows and your spears but I come to you together ah many of us came to you it's not only one person in one minute open your mouth and challenge every mountain that has stood before you I came yesterday alone but now I'm coming together together with Christ together with Christ doing ministry together winning souls together going to the nations together I started from Taraba alone but together with Christ raised up so if her name is Mary and she married John her new name becomes Mary John and if you want to address her properly with respect and honor are we together so you know me as Joshua Selman but you've been calling my name wrongly there is a surname that you need to add that surname is what makes all the difference ladies and gentlemen when you say Joshua Selman from an earthly standpoint you are not wrong you are not wrong but when it has to do with the prophetic implication if you say Joshua Selman and stop there uh -uh. The demons that challenged the sons of Skiva were not doubting their names. They did not see an attachment to the name. Carry this consciousness. Listen, I, I, I apologize if I sound arrogant, but I'm sharing with you, this is the construct of my life. Believe me with all humility. The only limitations in my life are the voice of God and process, not darkness. I don't see mountains in my life. The only thing that limits me is the voice of God because of my eternal allegiance to his voice. And then the law of time and seasons. That there are things that just happen at the sequence of time. But to chicken out and to back down because of limitations is an insult to the name that I represent. And don't think I'm just making empty noise. With all humility, I've proven this. It's one thing to talk and be a lecturer. It's another thing for your life to be a living epistle of the things that you say. The things that we have seen. The things that we have heard, the things that our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that is what we preach. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. The consciousness of your oneness. 
you look ordinary your face may not have changed man of God but I want you to go back on Sunday this Sunday not next Sunday climb your pulpit all of you don't go alone make sure that if you go alone you will be disgraced you will say a lot of things and share the grace and leave as if you went from a funeral you go with the consciousness remember together as you open that Bible together as you open that Bible together you hear in your spirit there's someone called John don't fear together together hear me if you are together why are you the only one taking the shame why is your ego so sensitive that you are so shame conscious if I am working with God if we fail it's two of us that will go with the shame he cannot take the glory while I take the shame whoever takes the glory must also take the shame so God defends you for his name sake How do I gather such an intelligent people and come and tell you the power of God will move? I'm seeing 14. You, I hope you know human beings are not animals. <laughs> you look at a man of God anointed with his life of prayer and fasting and tell him that he's going to step into a new dime. What kind of disrespect is that? Except you know what you are standing upon. Otherwise you will make a fool of yourself. He will not suffer my foot to be I carry your presence everywhere Who am I? Your mind is so full of me Mortal man, awesome God Mortal man I'm just a But you are the awesome listen Moses said don't send us alone if your presence will not go with us I don't care what information I know what it means to waste my time I wasted my time for 40 years without your presence I will not repeat it again if your presence will not go with us do not send let them call it delay but let me remain where your presence is I rather mark time with you than to go without you please sit down number three ah someone is shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief shaking away unbelief in the name of Jesus can anything good come out of Nazareth can anything good come out of your village? Satan has been bullying you with that mindset. Let's do number three. I'm hearing people laugh in the spirit. This is what I'm... No, 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 no. I'm not talking of right now by the spirit of God that the power of God I started hearing it just as I went behind like the power of God coming on someone and beginning to laugh in the spirit a holy laughter it's not something you do mechanical it's by the spirit this is what is going to happen here now and when it happens I will tell you the meaning of it it's not just that people are just shouting and bursting into laughter for no reason you see these are signs and wonders in the spirit there are messages a sign points to something if you are going to a babbing saloon and you see a sign it tells you you are close there and it directs you are we together the bible says the shouts of joy shall not depart from the tent of the righteous when people begin to have that kind of spiritual or holy laughter as we call it it is not just um a, a, some kind of uh, you know charismatic gibberish no 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 the implication there listen carefully the implication to that kind of experience is that there is a message from heaven and God is speaking to us this used to happen in the meetings of Papa Hagen in the 60s and the 70s where by the Spirit of God the Bible said laughter do it good like medicine 
it's not just this is not some mechanical thing these people are intelligent they will not come and be wasting their time like this Parus, kati bashala kosi ada balanda pariyata. Hera kosh kali kaparatos kiyata. It is a ministry of signs and wonders, because there are men and women God is bringing into this dimension of grace. In that laughter, there is healing flowing. In that laughter, there is victory being established. How do you stand before God's people and begin to call forth laughter? This is the realm of confidence I want to bring you into. You can fail alone, but not when you are with Him. Two of you do not fail. Halish ka parakus ka debanakus krakata beleke paratos ka vrates ka bia shai zaba basada ka tabras ka debalia. There are three men of God I'm seeing. There is a healing anointing that is resting on you you are a man of god three of you i just saw that glory resting on three men of god drink of that wine let that river flow to you let that river flow to you let it quicken your spirit man you will begin to walk in superior dimensions help them please in the name of jesus the christ of god you carry that grace you carry that anointing for signs and for wonders. Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. Take it half for me, please. This life that I have is a life of casting. This life that I have is the life of God. This life that you have is the life of Christ in you. This life that you have is the life of God. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. Sing it one more time. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life of God. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life of God. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. There is a spiritual surgery that is happening to your spirit man. You will relinquish a natural life and a Praise a divine life in experience. In experience. In experience. Where your life becomes a sign and a wonder. Not because you are a preacher. No. No. This is not about being a preacher. This is not about being a reverend, an apostle, a prophet. No. This is about being a partaker of his divine nature and revealing that implication here and now he says that man will see your light and glorify your father hallelujah please be seated again i'm tempted to thank his lordship the bishop for putting 
as far as I'm concerned this is beyond just a conference this is an apostolic and a prophetic convergence within the Northeast this is what I believe that God is giving the Northeast a chance to by the Spirit be repositioned to be part of God's global prophetic agenda that the role that we have to play from this region and God has placed it as a mandate hear me I'm speaking prophetically this is beyond just a program by the Anglican communion I am telling you the jealousy of God has rested upon this convergence it is a clarion call it has become a prophetic summit where God summons men within a region to train to equip to mature to empower and to release them like quivers that come from a man like the foxes of Samson releasing them with fire and grace and enlightenment and power Please be seated let's do number three mm, the waters is already been stirred in this place I know when the fountain of the Spirit is stirred let me do justice to number three and four and then we allow his majesty to do that which brings glory to Jesus number three what is the basis of our walking in victory in this kingdom we have access to the Holy Spirit hmm. the third factor that governs the believers victory is your access to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit John 16 begin our reading from verse 7 hmm. the spirit of prophecy is resting on people the spirit of prophecy is resting on people it's an impartation service the spirit of prophecy is resting on people the spirit of prophecy oh like it happened in the prophecy of Joel it shall come to pass he says that I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh did you not read it in the Bible men and women male and female upon all his spirit is coming upon them hallelujah John 16 7 Jesus is speaking Jesus is speaking nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you and then it says but if I depart I will send him unto you verse 8 and when he is come the Bible says just a moment so that they walk on on the screen I want to read it and quote it when he's come, let me use, let me just get the scripture so that I quote it verbatim for you. John 16, it says, When he's come, he will reprove the world of righteousness, of judgment, of sin of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not, verse 10, of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. 11. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged verse 12 now I have many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it oh I like this when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come and he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you the Holy Spirit is the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God 
is the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. Is the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. Is changing everything in obedience. Hear me. The Holy Spirit is beyond the wind. The Holy Spirit is beyond the dove. The Holy Spirit is beyond fire. He is beyond oil. He is beyond candles. All of those things are just expressions of Him. The Holy Spirit is God. Send by Jesus to the believer to help guarantee your arriving and your living a victorious life. It was Jesus Himself who continued to beckon on the disciples who would later be apostles and he told them that they needed the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a man Jesus could not be victorious alone it was by the empowerment of the Spirit it was the Holy Spirit that made him to become the Christ Christos the anointed of God how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power and the Bible says he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him ladies and gentlemen please hear me show me an ordinary man no matter how weak you are be introduced to the ministry of the Holy Spirit I show you a sign and a wonder that is imagined the Holy Spirit is not for preachers the Holy Spirit is not just for men and women of God he said for this promise is unto you and your children your children's children even as many as are far of whom the Lord will call you see the ministry of the Holy Spirit is beyond tongues and prophecy the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God he has a fourfold assignment to believers number one his assignment to you as a believer is to provide guidance number two to provide direction number three to bring you revelation and understanding number four he's responsible for empowerment the Holy Spirit when you ignore his ministry you are bankrupt of revelation you cannot be guided you cannot be directed you cannot access revelation illumination by the spirit you can read the bible without him and all you will see is a plethora of confusing statements it is the holy spirit who takes the veil out of the scripture and now connects the dots so that it ministers life hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 I'm reminded of a vision that I had years ago when God was revealing to me my mandate and my call and my assignment I saw an endless sea of people have shared this countless times and yet it never becomes old in my mind because of the impacts that this vision had upon my spirit I'm standing at an elevated position and I'm looking at a whole generation of people crying and languishing a crowd just like this only that it is in multiplied proportions millions of people across several races this is what I saw listen and then those who were in front the vision was zoomed and they came and they were crying and I said why the tears and they said there is no food and there is no water and I said who is the cause and they pointed at me I said no I'm not that wicked to rob you of food and water but I was afraid because it looked like there were some people who wanted to harm me out of anger and whatever but I made up my mind that I rather perish than to allow these people to cry as soon as I opened the door there was a giant gray bearded man who stood and he stretched his mighty hand and he said give me your hands now I know it was the Holy Spirit 
he said give me your hands and I brought my tiny hands and placed it upon his hands and he said I will walk with you and we began to move jumping from one place to another I saw myself doing things I ordinarily would not be able to do because the hand of the mighty one when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible becomes possible when he holds your hands everything becomes possible when he holds your The Holy Spirit, the one who helps ordinary men to become mighty. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? The administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. If it does not arrive, power cannot arrive. Ye shall receive power. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 not just when you are saved alone the power to be a witness comes after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you he says and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth when they were threatened in Acts chapter 4 they came together in their company and began to pray and said now oh lord behold their threatenings and he says grant unto your servant that signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy son the bible says the place shook and they were filled with the holy spirit and they went to preach with boldness isaiah chapter 11 talks about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit as we have come to know theologically speaking. Hallelujah. Number one is the spirit of dominion, the spirit of the Lord. Number two, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. Number three, the spirit of might. Am I right on that? And then the spirit of counsel. Finally, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord seven dimensions of his spirit broken into four hallelujah how do you do ministry without the Holy Spirit no he's the one who convicts sinners no matter your oratory it cannot translate a man from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son men can listen to you and say wow this is a smart preacher very intelligent I see that you studied well and it stops there it is the Holy Spirit who translates your sermon from a lecture to life regardless the Greek and the Hebrew that we interface our preachings with it is only the Holy Spirit that helps the Word of God to convict men and to bring them into understanding preachers don't preach without him businessmen don't do business without him parents don't raise your children without him it will be a risk you'll be raising trouble on its way to happen lecturers all walks of life it does not matter who you are and what you do the holy spirit is an eternal blessing to all men given to all men not to preachers given to all men not just to businessmen some of you are aware of his ministry but you have not received his ministry the third reason why we can stand tall to say we will live the victorious life in truth is because he has given us access to the Holy Spirit. Let me do a quick recap, then I give you the final point. Number one, the consciousness of the fact that God is the all-powerful God. Number two, the consciousness that you have been made today in Christ a partaker of his divine nature. The implication being that you are one with Christ and you have a positional advantage. You have been made a beneficiary of his victory in Christ. As he is today, victorious, exalted, so are we in this life. The key phrase for that statement is together. Do not forget this. Raise together. 
cause to walk together to preach together to walk together and then now number three we have been given the advantage of the Holy Spirit guiding us showing us things to come let me give you a little story to help you appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit many years ago before the internet became really strong in Africa and before we embraced at the infancy of social media platforms the Holy Spirit came to me one night in worship and prayer and he told me he said in the future people are going to hear teachings for free and will not buy in tapes and CDs again this internet you see he says I want you to take your teachings as raw as they are do not sell them put them on the internet and my angel will take it to the nations this is how ministry will be when he said that it will be suicidal for you to ignore tape ministry and all of that that was the time of remember there's something called rechargeable lantern rechargeable uh, what they call it now remember that thing yes that has light and has a radio too that you go to pray and then you slot in your radio that was when he came and I said Lord I believe you today a major reason by the privilege of God's grace for the visibility the influence and the impact he has brought is because of that one instruction the Holy Spirit can tell you one thing to do one thing to do one thing to do one thing to do it was one miracle that God used to announce me those days in Zaria many of you who have listened to me you've heard the miracle about somebody whose spine was broken and shredded completely this one was left for dead they were waiting for a consultant to come from India and to try to do a delicate surgery if perhaps less than a 50 50 chance for survival then phones just came out you know all kinds of phones and then I remember when I was told I said I would pray for him to confess I'm not sure I, I, I don't know if I knew a miracle like that would happen and I remember in the night or early hours of the morning I was in prayer and it was time to call that gentleman laced with all kinds of neck collars bracelets and things to hold him and he was at the other end of the phone and I picked the phone and I talked to this gentleman and you could see that he was in pains and I told him I said I want to bring you the life of God and to minister to you I don't know if I saw the guy physically maybe I will have the faith to have prayed for him thank God for phones because I prayed for him true story verified story as I prayed a simple prayer that was less than a minute or two and the next thing I told him move your neck and check yourself and it was a shock and a wonder this gentleman began to scream and the only thing I remember was he removed the next bracelet as he was telling me and he ran to his mother's room and as soon as he opened the door the only thing I had before the phone went off was a woman shouting Jesus and that was it listen by the next day people came to gather you know how someone dies and people come to greet that was how people came to the house to verify if this was just some gibberish by people stage managing miracles or this was true when I saw the gentleman myself and he had done the second x-ray that miracle shook the teaching hospital if many of you who know the teaching hospital in Zaria I began to get calls from nurses and doctors and consultants there's somebody who has a fibroid somewhere we heard about you and what happened one genuine verifiable miracle can advance can announce you in ways that no poster no social media publicity can announce I can tell you this I'm not talking of miracles and manifestations that whether they are sure or not sure or something you are saying that you cannot defend no it's a risk to live your life like that exaggerating miracles and telling lies will only disgrace you and demean your sense of integrity 
if it did not happen it did not happen it can happen but when it happens it can that is why miracles that happen in the presence of people is powerful because they see it there and then hallelujah i said all this to let you know that the same spirit that raised christ from the dead that when he dwells with you and is in you he's able to turn your life around and you become literally you know how an mtn mask is that you place it in one place and it affects everybody within that territory that is what the holy spirit can make you become everybody say the holy spirit one more time say the holy spirit hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain